Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Suits Laboratory. Today we are doing a rocket build and a little bit of a review. So we have the Space Speedster from B&B Rockets. B&B uh, is bigger and better rockets, but this is one of their kits that they are reproducing. So it is the Space Speedster. So Kelsey and I together are going to be building this rocket today. And she's hunting for some tool. I'm gonna get my box knife or so there's at least one open. I'm just shredding it. Fair enough. Alright. So let's get this packaging open and take a look at the contents of our kit. So we have this very nice piece of cover art. I think there's a silica bag in there, but you do it. No, no, Ooh, a 3D printed hardened nose cone piece. So this is the tip of our rocket. We have the primary body panel, our fins and pods, a core motor tube it looks like, a bunch of foam parts. Uh, these look like they'll be the fins and a fuselage piece, a shock cord and streamer, as well as our instructions. We are going to live off these instructions for the next little bit. Yes. Um, it says we need CA glue, white liquid glue, and masking tape. So our painter's tape and white glue. All right. So we got white glue and all of our glue. Absolutely nothing is really well organized. For us, not not their fault. Yep. That's that's on us. No, we just chaos build these things. Yep. All right. So, our instructions, we'll, we'll do these upside down to maybe help anyone watching. Um, so, the front just shows you all the parts it comes with and the, what you will also need. Um, so, scissors we've got. We've also got a box blade that's not listed amongst the things needed. Alright. Oh, skip this. There's paragraphs oh, here. Alright. Using cellophane adhesive tape, prepare... Did it say that we needed, like, regular tape? No, it did not. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay, so that's an additional thing you need. That is not on the instructions additionally needed. Well, is cellophane is adhesive tape. Okay, just like regular scotch tape? Yeah, which I've got some in the drawer. In adhesive tape, prepare three to four small tabs of tape, about three quarters of an inch long. Roll the body and insert the tab inside inside of the slot then start at the tip making the cone shape as even as possible tape in place along seam continue working your way slowly along the seam aligning the two sides straight while taping in place until you reach the end finally use tape to seal the entire seam from the tip to the rear refer to diagrams and images for assistance okay so technically speaking the tape just kind of a keep it there we could glue it if we really wanted to but I don't want it this is a very nice quality of paper it's good cardstock it's very good it might help us if we rolled it gently over I the did. edge well that's what I was rolling it in my hands so I just didn't want to crease it on with a hard edge that's what I was afraid of come in Ooh. all right For those of you following along at four small tabs of tape. Why are remaining along the inside? We don't really need to do that at this point. I think they meant along the inside. I'm honestly not certain. It's not clear because then it says to like run one piece down the entire length. It probably meant on the inside. We just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's fine. <laughs> it really rolled, doesn't matter for functionality. <laughs> it really doesn't. Rolled. It looks like this. Um, the tabs that were on this are inside the little slots here. Uh, we're just pretty much gonna press it together and run a piece of tape down the entire length of the body. Get the crappy end of the tape off. Align it as best we can. You would stop moving. I'm sorry. I was you trying. Would be great. Sorry, trying to get it aligned. 
This is what happens when you leave engineers alone with instructions. We don't follow them. We also complain about them. Yeah. It's fine. This is why we've used the satiny tape, just so that it can get free. We can peel it and restick it. I got an idea. Oh, that tab's mm. coming out. No, that's fine. I no, no. It, it's, uh, I know. I don't care about the tab right now. I'm just trying to get one edge. Okay. If I can, can get that completely. If I can get one edge completely set. Yeah. Then all I gotta do is push it back together. I'm learning that you and I have very different build styles. <laughs> it's not that I haven't had five years to learn that, but. Mm. You want to take a stab at that? Thank you. It's frustrating me a little bit. We are dealing with flat ribbon essentially on conical irregular body so this is not going to be a straightforward do we need to cut it potentially and just let it fold on itself potentially and of course this doesn't actually matter for the actual like construction of the project we just are being little OCD nerds aesthetic gremlins yep so I'm trying to stay in frame See, this is just, just in time for the holidays after we've already done how many hours of gift wrapping and now we're like super nitpicky about it. How's that? Probably about as good as that's gonna get. The key was to start between the tabs and then work out to the tabs and then to the end of the body. Yeah. I'm just gonna roll that over and then turn it off. And you could get the bubbles out. <laughs> yep, I'm just working on bubbles now. All right, so what Kelsey did to actually get this to work after I fought it and failed. Um, and that's probably also where the extra pieces of tape would have helped <laughs> actually follow the instructions. <laughs> that, that is fair. And they're probably going to comment on this video and tell us yes. Yes, that, that, that would have solved a lot of problems. <laughs> All right, so Kelsey ended up starting between the two tabs that are here and then just gently pushed out and got it all lined up. So. But it, the... the, the mm -hmm. The cone does lay very nice and flat. It is a gorgeous shape. So, it did. It turned into a beautiful cone. Okay. So, next. Blue. We're going to have to cut into this thing. Start by cutting a small hole in the body tube, neck about two and a half inches away from the end. Next, tie the shock cord to the motor tube and thread the shock cord into the hole and out the end of the tube. Black and white photos are gonna kill me. Um, I think we need a uh, X-Acto knife. Well, I, have the, I have my box better. I'll also just grab my X-Acto in case we decide we want it. Extra precision. Yep. Not everyone's gonna have an X-Acto. Oh, I yep. do actually want to measure the two and a half inches. That sounds awfully precise. I kind of wish the ruler had been included on the uh, instructions. I get why it wasn't, because yeah. it's not a typical... No, that's, that's something like, that you should just have. It doesn't, not like Estes gives us one. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's not you like I put it... the engineering one that has like six different scales on yeah, it. Yeah, you care about this one. <laughs> With the chunk missing? Yeah, it's... Fantastic. It got dropped a few times. College was rough. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, about two and a half inches from one end. Tie the shock cord. All right, gang, so sorry about that. Uh, we didn't realize the GoPro cut out on us, but we are several steps further along. So what we had to do was cut a little slot in our tube to mount the shock cord. Um, so there was a tiny little slot we cut in there, tied 
a uh, slip knot around the tube, fed the tube through, um, and it came out the end. We then glued the tube into the body with a little bit of CA glue and spritzed it with um, accelerator. It says to do it with white glue. I went ahead and did it with um, CA just to make it go a little faster. You are impatient. Uh, yeah, that too. And then we put in the back bulkhead. I also see it glued that in and then we've put a fillet of white glue around there to help hold it in place. Um, it is important when you're putting in this back bulkhead to make sure the you've got it clocked correctly. That way uh, the pattern on the side comes out correctly. We also were admiring now off camera um, all of the detail that they put printed on this rocket. Like they're not stickers like Estes usually does. So. Yeah. so now we get to set this aside. Yep, this will get set to the side for the moment. I'm also realizing that if that uh, shock cord ever comes out, you're, you're done though. So. Yeah, your you new gotta, rocket. New. Well, you just got to re-glue it on or like make a little incision or something. So I wouldn't lean that against something because it's already, I got a little heavy on the glue. I'll lean it the other way. You see that big blob that I put in there? Yeah. Good stuff. I don't know if that's going to stay there. Um, I can go move it off somewhere else. Well, just for now. All right, so next we're moving on to the fins. So we've got the paper here. We need to cut out the outside outline of every single one of these fins, as well as punch out the three foam fin templates here. So the foam them? fin templates are the easy ones. Are you taking the easy part? I'm not taking any part. I'm just knocking them out because I like foam. Uh -huh. I'm going to take a look at one of these angled sections. So How dare you be done before me? Sorry. Well, interesting. You're gonna have like these, these are flaps to be able to fold over. That's what I'm seeing. But I don't know how we're gonna hold them, probably with super glue. So I didn't realize those were flaps, so I gotta cut those lines. Uh, yeah, you do. You oh, cut yeah, here. Those, yeah, you do. That's what I was saying earlier, that I was not super clear on what's actually like a cut line versus what's not. Yeah, further definition on that would definitely be helpful. Or, you know, we can use our two brain cells between the two of us. And so on the print, the uh, little black tabs here, or little tabs um, that have the line on the front of them. Boy, words are hard. Um, are what we're using, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and use my ruler. Come on, shaking the table and not making this easy for me. I'm so sorry. Now, if you guys have ever run into BNB rockets out at a launch, they're actually some really cool uh, kids and their dad. Um, they're an awesome group to chat with, and they really like what they do. So. Oh yeah. Some neat people if you ever run into them. So basically, we folded down these tabs, and it actually helps with alignment. Um, what I ended up doing. So it pretty much self-aligns itself on the fin where it needs to go, which is really handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to coat the foam fin in uh, glue real quick. The Elmer, oh, this is Gorilla's glue stick. She's a little overkill, but that's fine. <laughs> hey, it's meant for kids. Goes on purple, dries clear. They definitely put some real thought and design work into how these, um, how these fins look. Agreed. And how the how they're made, how they're uh, assembled and whatnot. I also love the little no step stuff on it. Yeah, the fins say no step on them too, which is really cool. It's adorable. All right, We're folding that edge. Folding that edge. Honestly, instead of cutting out that, those little flaps, we probably could get away with just slitting the edges and folding them under. I we honestly I, probably could. I just thought of that, like, that they probably never actually intended for people to cut those out. <laughs> I'm gonna try 
it on this one. I'm just. All right. So once you've glued it on one side, you pretty much just start folding it over on itself. Um, my plan right now is to fold and tuck everything together as I go um, to make this as structurally sound as I can. So we're going to go ahead, put the glue on here. Oh, Kelsey keeps cutting that I'm out. I'm still having arts and crafts time over here. I am having arts and crafts time, just a little bit different. <laughs> and then I'm also going to go ahead and run a dab of glue stick Do you have down these parts as well. And then I'm going over. I think this one's also gonna need some. Noticing it's not a perfect art. And these little flaps. I technically said we're supposed to glue them to the fin as well. I didn't do that part. I was just trying right. to glue them to themselves, but they're not sticking great. So oh. the paper's not sticking to the <clears throat> fin um, real great. on this back side. So I'm just gonna take it back to basics. I'm gonna just let you take care of this because you seem to be. You know, the expert. That's not bad, but we're definitely gonna uh, jump cut this scene. <laughs> okay. I definitely didn't, didn't get too thick of a uh, paperboard that's it's easy to work with and bends rather than creases. Yeah. But can get a sharp edge when you want it. I just want to do a dab of super glue. Kind of. Just do it. That's what I'm already planning to do to fix this. If you want to, you know, let's put this over here. So my my fix to way too much issues on projects. Super glue fixes everything. I'm going to just shift that all over to okay. you for now. Just going to get kicked out. Got mm -hmm. it. Try and keep this in frame for everyone. Let's hope the super glue doesn't melt this. I right, keep it on the paper. It should be fine. Well, that wasn't my plan. Weep. Yep, yep. Honestly, these tabs are just a little long, so I'm kind of trimming one edge of them. Also, the super glue turns the paper green. Oh! Oh, I see that. That's fun. Good to know. What if that's the only way to get the stick? It's the only thing I'm having success with so far. these fins. Mm -hmm. right, 
Could you take that spritz bottle? And just spritz my hands. Again. I'm trying to not move. Perfect. <laughs> I'd rather they be a little long though than a little short. Yep. Nope. nope. Yeah, Mine are too chunky. Alrighty. The most challenging part about this build. So far, it has been. It's gonna look really good, though. You uh, shoot me again, just right there on the edge. Perfect. Missed most of it the first time. I need to buy some more of this. Yep, I'm running out. All right. So that's fin a one. fin. We're going to snap to the rest of the fins being done. And look at that. They're all done. We have three fins. <laughs> And I have my fingers got super glued together more than once. It's fine. So. What glue did they actually recommend using? White glue? Uh, yeah, white glue. Ah, that would have taken forever. It would have taken hours for this to go. We're not feeling like doing this in hours. I like doing builds in minutes. <laughs> Gotten spoiled with my rocket designs. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, so we still have some other things that need to dry, but these are our three fins that we're going to set aside for now, and we're waiting on the body tube, so we'll be back when that is ready to go. All right, so it, it, we took a couple day break, honestly, um, but we've got all three fins, so our two side fins, our top fin, and the fuselage is now dry. You can see on the back there, everything is- Turned out really well. Very nice. Very, very nice. Here, let me let me reposition the mic a bit. It might, might help both of us. Let's try that. All right. So our next step is to attach the three fins to the body. So they want us to make sure you understand that this is the back, this is the front of the fin. So the angled parts, the front, on all of the fins are basically. On the top fin, it's the longer piece with the straight lines. That's always your front. The three, I guess, parallel lines to the long part of the red. Horizontal. Horizontal lines versus the vertical lines. So, horizontal front, vertical back. Words are hard today. So, um, we begin by placing a few drops of glue on the base of one of the trapezoidal fins with the flaps folded out at 90 degrees. You'll notice. These little flaps are folded out instead of being straight. Um, then place on the bottom left corner, align the base of the fin flush with the back of the paper body and aiming the front directly at the nose as shown. Once aligned perfectly, hold in place until strong or use tape to secure the fin. We we'll use tape, I think. Probably some blue tape, a little bit of blue tape and white glue. Yeah, that sounds good. But like, I see that we've got the lines here for this guy. So if you look at the rocket, it's this is kind of hard to see the rocket outline here, where it's supposed to come okay. off on the angle. So like that. Yeah. Right on the like radius. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's okay. Like, you want to aim that at the camera, kind of show yeah. them how you've got that. Oh, I can't see. Nope. You got to aim. Show them the back. Go ahead and show them that. Right, sorry, I'll hold it. Well, I can't see the screen where That's it fine. Is. So it's gonna sit roughly like that, and that'll be one, we'll have an identical one on the other side. Me? Yeah, about there. Me? And then the top one will go here. The top one actually has some lines to align it between. 
So we'll super helpful. We'll figure out exactly where it needs to go. Cool. What kind of glue are we using on this? It doesn't say. It just says a few drops of glue. I'd assume it means white glue. Probably. Um, do we want to use super glue? <laughs> we can use a combo. So we could do super glue down. Yeah, we can. We can put it down there. Like on the foam. Yep. Okay. Because then, because we've learned that the super glue will turn the blue paper green, so we don't necessarily want to put it on the since the flaps are actual external points. Also, I love the little white dots look like rivets. Yep. Like that's kind of adorable. They do. Not kind of. That is adorable. Okay. Blue time. All right, so we'll start with one of the angled fins. Basically, we're tacking with the super glue and then sealing all the flap surface down with the white glue, right? Yep. So I'm going to put down on the foam piece here my super glue. Why don't we do the top fin first? And it says to do the side ones oh, first. does it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. I stand corrected. Blue asthma. Alright, so I put a liberal amount of glue, uh, super glue, and then we're going to take our white glue and conservatively put that on there. How much blue tape do you think we're going to need? Um, uh, that is an unknown. Alright, now, if we align it the way they tell us to, this is probably going to be super uneasy for everyone else to see. It ought to look like that. Uh oh, it slid on me. And it says, I want to put the back of the cone, right? Yeah, with the back edge of the body. Which is kind of hard to do, won't lie. Unfortunately, I kind of already smeared glue everywhere, That's so I don't really want to put tape on it just to, to glue the tape down. Okay. If it's staying, then like we're good. If we just hold it for a minute and just yeah, cut this. it seems like that's actually. Holding. drying pretty quickly at least the super glue is. so the first one kind of looks like that Woo. not sure if the super glue tacked that down or the white glue probably the super glue uh, either way at this point it's it's on and yeah you want to hold this because i don't really feel I like setting it down wait on it as much it feels pretty darn sturdy i think it's the super glue took but I don't want to take any chances. I'll give you that clip. This is such a cool profile, though, honestly. Hopefully, we managed to get some blue on the body, too. But I love these unique shapes on rockets. So. Yeah. So glad B&B brought this back. this like kindergarten arts and crafts mm -hmm. you can color in between the lines right no i, I definitely did not pass kindergarten <laughs> all right so now our goal is to make this look as, as even as possible identical as we possibly can that looks pretty that looks pretty good to me all right as good as we're gonna get we're rocket scientists we're not surgeons what's the difference Okay, there's a massive difference. <laughs> Don't kill me in the comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm that too. Okay. So far, so, so good. So that's... That in and of itself is a really cool... Yeah. I mean, this is kind of similar to what I've been I've been doing with... Uh, going around with your... Yeah, I got a rocket that's got a similar fin profile. Not the same body shape, but similar yeah. fin profile. Hopefully, I'll get some good test flights this spring and actually get to show it off. All right. So now I just have the one left. So same thing. Same thing with the top one. Yeah. Now it doesn't say anything about using those alignment lines, the two 
square ones on top. So. I figure that's what we do though. Yeah. Cause like they're perfect, like almost the perfect length. Yeah, we just don't end up being able to see them cause the white rivets line up with where they are. Yeah, that's the point. And I would make sure that we cover those. I do think it's interesting that they're able to get the structural integrity that they need on the fins without doing like a through wall. Do you like what Estes always does? Or often does, I should say. With their balsa wood fins. Yeah. Well, it depends. On their low power stuff, Estes glues to the outside. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess you're right. We're just so like used that. to through wall with yeah. our high power. I still, work. I really like the flap connection rather than just taking the edge and. Agreed. You know, there's a lot of surface area there, so there's a lot of structural integrity. Basically, you're getting a fillet effect without having to actually do a actually fillet. put fillet glues in, glue fillet in there. That's why I like 3D print fins. <laughs> I print the fillet in place. Okay, I have. I'm gonna hold the bottom there. I'm not sure. Do we want to like line it up square on nope. the back? I want it square on the lines. I'm making the uh, executive decision. Yep, you're a little far back, but that's okay. It's perfect, 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 darling. You definitely got a little uh, excessive there with the glue. Uh, I could care less if I'm excessive with the glue. <laughs> We're trying to ensure this thing doesn't move. I would rather it have a, a little bit of extra glue and be structurally sound than look perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I love it. That kind of has the similar issue mine had in the design where like you end up having to have that really tall fin. Yeah. You get a little bit sportier look with a shorter fin, but yeah, it doesn't functionally fly yeah, without I was it. Say, then you're into the realm of sci-fi and just for looks rather than functionality. We need something that actually works. Yep. Yeah. Looky there. Nice. Snazzy. Get a nice close-up on that rocket. That looks super Don't cool. <laughs> I know. I gotta. <laughs> yeah, just break a rocket. Three seconds. All right, now it says. Mostly square. Yeah. Okay. It, it might corkscrew a bit. Eh. It's called creative flying. Now it says to place a fillet of glue along the top rectangular fin um, and place the launch lug as shown. So it says to sh it shows to put it on the vehicle's left hand side. Um, so it would be everyone on screen. It's your right hand side. The little launch lug is going to go right there. So I'm going to get that as close as I can. It's gonna end up going right there. So we're gonna- That's an interesting spot. That was not where I thought that was gonna end up. I thought it was gonna go on the bot on like the belly. Yeah, same. Uh, are we gonna super glue it or are we gonna- I was just gonna white glue it. No. This stuff will stay. Okay. I'll let you do that. Super easy install. No having to worry about lining it up or getting it squared up with anything. You're just bam. Yep. And if if they really people really want to nitpick, it's technically not parallel with your motor tube, but it's like off by maybe three degrees. It's really not that bad for this low power stuff. I ain't gonna care. It'd be yeah. All right. Next, we've got our little nose cone. It's this really cool translucent red printed it's piece. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. They, it's SLA printed like. What's SLA? Uh, it's the liquid. Kind of like the resin? Yeah, printing? that's okay. resin printing. That's what SLA is, sorry. Okay. It's one of the other, but it's actually got this really nice curve printed oh, into it. Oh, that's a beautiful design. Yes, because they did a, a semi-circle. Now if I could, you know, actually get the. It's a burr, I think. Yeah, it's not. I think we're going to have to file on the nose cone anyway to get it to fit. Yeah, it's not a bad printer or anything. Here, I got it, dear. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to grab... Oh, well, that works. Beautiful. I was gonna grab as long as everyone stays still, that works. Yep. <laughs> okay, and then just knot it. Yeah, so it says to um, just tie it to the shot cord um, and then use the pink streamer to just tie the pink streamer somewhere distant down. But before we tie the pink streamer on, I say we test fit that nose cone. Oh, yeah. Because I'm fairly certain we're going to need to file it a little bit. Yeah. It's, it needs some sanding. 
since its fit was kind of tight, something we probably should have done before we got started. And a little half hitch, maybe another half hitch for good measure, because I'm paranoid. I'll get out. I am not willing to let this be a sacrifice to the rocket gods. We don't make any sacrifices around here. All right, me. All right, let's go ahead and do a test fit. So, best way to do that, we're just gonna go ahead and coil up the baby. Coil up the shock cord. Slide it on in. I am noticing that the motor is a friction fit. Oh, is it? There's no motor retention. Oh, we might wanna put a little clip in then for that. We'll see. We can give it a test flight. I know they flew them at uh, Airfest without any. I'm sure, they're, what is this, a quarter or a half A? It's... Um, uh, yeah, it's a half A, half I think. A? It's probably not gonna... I would say that they want a 10 3, okay. which is... So that is not even gonna come close to fitting. Just a little. Oh, there's a burr on oh, the bottom of this pretty severely. It. Just a little bit of... Oh, that's coming off. Wonderfully. Just be careful of your shoulder edge. Yeah, that's why I'm starting with just the base edge. bevel on the leading in edge and then I'm going to go ahead and give it a here. Uh, I've just done this way too many times with my own prints in the early prototypes Your turn. Oh. Go ahead and uh, oh boy. you get a packet this time. I'll close up all our extra supplies floating around. Yeah, we shouldn't need any glue or anything now. We've exhausted all the parts except for the streamer. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Got a shover in there. Sorry, camera. This is not a great shot. We just gotta do do the thing. So, there's your completed rocket. Well, minus. Minus cord. Streamer. But. So they gave us a foot of streamer? Hmm. Nice. Pretty good. Alright. Alright, so we can go ahead and... That feels like a really good fit. That test fit. Is it tie it on? Yep, it says just tie the streamer on. Cool. What are you doing? Can, I, can Kelsey tie a square knot today? You know, it's high square now. You can just overhand. That's fair. It's a streamer. And then for packing a streamer, you always just roll it back up. I'm, I love that they pack it rolled because then it naturally sets that way, so it's really easy to pack into your rocket. Yeah, this is the way. The few rockets I have that come with streamers, this is the way I try to make sure. I'm actually gonna go and tuck. Yeah, yeah. Gonna go tuck my little tail end of my tie into back into that arc of their print. Yep. That is a really well designed um, mount point. Oh, well, they've got to have a pretty good printer to get that high quality. Yeah, I was gonna so. say, my only concern is the wall thickness on the outer edge of these holes, but you've got a very structurally solid resin, so it's not going to be yeah. that big of a concern. Right, let's go ahead and try and Oh, hey, look, it kind of balances there. Uh -huh. So... Oh, this is an Estes rocket. Shove it in. It's all right. This is a test fit. This isn't a flight. Well, I recommend before flying it, anyone shove dog barf or uh, a little bit of wadding in yeah, between the motor and the mm -hmm. shock cord. But thankfully, you can actually do that from uh, the motor side. Yep. Since there's no retention in there. Yep. They designed it that way, I bet. Probably. <laughs> Bam! 
Damn, look at that. All right, that is our that completed is rocket. That is a deadly spike, man. I love yeah. the translucence of it. Oh, this whole thing's gorgeous. I think this is it does. Favorite. It does actually say in here to go ahead and sand the uh, nose cone and oh, make sure it fits properly before flight. But then, this flies on an A10-3 mini motor is what they recommend. Um, and they do recommend you fly with recovery wadding or dog barf, depending on what you're using. Dog barf is what for the layman? Uh, it's just cellulose insulation. You've probably said it a million times in other videos, but I just want to make yeah. sure. This is sexy, man. So um, they're using masking tape. Uh, make about four to five wraps of tape around the motor. Um... Oh, the motor and the tube securing the motor in place because technically there's no forward retention. They're literally just hanging it out the end and then taping it on. It works. It'll work with that small of a I motor. I mean, this thing's literally cardboard and foam. Like, you don't need much. I love it, though. This is a ornament, man. This is yeah. gorgeous. All right. Well, that is the completed Space Speedster. I love it. So if you guys are interested in checking out B&B Rockets and their Space Speedster, I will have a link in the description down below. They um, really built an incredible kit here. They are a fun group to work with. We got to meet them out at AirFest 28 this last year, 29. Sure, I don't remember what number At one. AirFest um, in 2023. Now, they were a lot of fun to chat with, and these were really cool kits. This is one of the really cool kits we picked up. We've got two more kits built by them that we will be making here in the coming months, but this is the where we started. So just remember, whenever you're putting your motor in, tape it. Tape around it. Um, but, yep, in coming months, we will be building uh, the Ice Storm and Khufu's Pyramid. Those are going to be our two big ones coming up. So keep an eye out for those videos. Um, but that's really all we've got for you right now. Very nice so. build. Very good kit. B and B. Yep, B and B. We're very, very impressed by the build, and we look forward to building your other two rockets we picked up at Airfest. So thanks for watching, gang. Fly safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.